Hi, this is Gary. On today's episode of MacMOS Now, let's take a look at the new features of the iPhone 2.0 operating system. So we all know the big new feature of iPhone 2.0 is the App Store. This allows you to add all sorts of different applications to your iPhone. But putting that aside for the moment, let's go and take a look at the actual changes to the existing iPhone software. There's a couple little things and a couple big things. Let's take a look. Now some of the biggest changes have happened in mail. In addition to all the different types of accounts you could add before, such as regular pop accounts and Gmail accounts, you can now add Microsoft Exchange accounts. And of course, you can also add Mobile Me accounts, which replaces the .Mac accounts from before. A Mobile Me account now includes more than just mail. You can also sync your calendars, bookmarks, and contacts through it if you're using it. One feature that iPhone mail users have been dying for is the ability to delete multiple emails at the same time. You can do that now by pressing edit and then clicking on the little dots to the left and then you hit the delete button. You can also move multiple at the same time. Now it doesn't solve the problem when you've got hundreds of emails to delete. That could easily happen since spam isn't filtered on the iPhone. So all it takes is a few hours for your inbox to fill up and there's really no way to get rid of them rather than hitting all of these little red check marks. But at least it's a step in the right direction. You can also view several new types of documents in mail now. For instance, here's a PowerPoint presentation that came in mail. And it will show that on the iPhone and allow you to scroll through it. You can also view documents that were created in iWork. Here's a numbers document. Now Maps has been improved. Mostly to use the GPS chip in the new iPhone, but it works in the old iPhone too. What it does is it will actually update your location. If you tell it you want directions from your current location to a new location or you just want to show your current location and then you're driving along or walking along, you'll see your location change. It works great with GPS which is very detailed and can actually show you walking by each house on a block. Another new feature is parental restrictions. You can decide to turn off podcasts that have an explicit tag. You can also restrict browsing on Safari, YouTube, and installing of applications. I noticed that now you can turn on Wi-Fi even if you're in airplane mode. So when you get on airplane, you set it to airplane mode, it turns off all network activity. Then you can go back into the Wi-Fi settings, turn on Wi-Fi. So this will allow you to use your iPhone on the few airplanes that actually provide a Wi-Fi connection. You can also now select from a whole bunch of different international keyboards. A lot of people have mentioned how now passwords are entered in where you see the little black dots instead of the characters you're typing except for the last letter which shows you the character. This makes it easier to type in random passwords using the keyboard because you can easily see mistakes. There are now several new ways to add images to your camera roll besides just using the camera. One of course is to take a screenshot. You can hold the button on the top of the iPhone and then the main menu button at the bottom and you'll get a screenshot of whatever's on your screen at the moment. You can also capture images from the web or from an email. Just when you're viewing an image in Safari or in the email application, press and hold down on the image and you'll get a little save image. The calendar application now can show multiple calendars which is nice since multiple calendars can now be pushed to your iPhone with the mobile me service. We've always had the little dot com shortcut button at the bottom of a keyboard when typing a URL. But now you can use other suffixes as well. Press and hold the dot com and up will pop dot org, dot edu, and dot net. Just drag your finger to select one. You can also do the same trick when sending an email but there's no dot com shortcut button. But there is a period. Hold down the period and you'll get the same list of domain suffixes. The iPhone calculator is pretty simple. But the new iPhone calculator will actually switch when you hold it sideways. Now we have a full scientific calculator on the iPhone. There is sort of a new to-do functionality on the iPhone, but it's through the mail application. If you're using mail on the Mac and you've got the mobile me service, you can add to-do items in your mail application and they'll show up as to-do items in mail on the iPhone. Not exactly ideal for making a to-do list, but at least there is now a way to add a to-do item on your Mac and have it seen on your iPhone later. So that's a brief summary of the changes in the iPhone operating system for iPhone 2.0. There's probably some more underlying changes for stability and support for apps and there might be a few things that nobody's quite discovered yet. Until next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now.